the attacks that God allows to come into your life is suggestive of your watch hours. You need to understand and become conscious of the science of attacks around your life. Let's try again. How many of you in the night you sense our attacks? Something with the one that holds like this. Then you say, Let's try again. All right. It's not necessary. It's of the devil. But it's not altogether bad. What it means is at that time, you were supposed to be watching. So if you check when that thing came to hold you on the neck on Wednesday, on Friday, it you might find out it is the same time. I'm trying to teach you to understand your own unique watches. Oh my Jesus. This my class is done. I want to save you. I want to save you from the grip to release you into liberty. But you need to stay with me. Your attack has a science around it because it is occasioned by an intelligent entity. The reason why the entity had access to you in the first place is because you became vulnerable. Your defense system was withdrawn at a time, at a certain time. And that time that your defense system was withdrawn is suggestive of the time that you were supposed to be. What? So, those of you that lifted your hands that receive visitations from the enemy, if you sleep in the afternoon, do you receive those visitations? Can somebody help me quickly? <laughs> you have realized that when you sleep in the afternoon, you sleep where? Oh, most of you are not good students of the spiritual indices of your life. You sleep in the afternoon, there's no crisis. But when you sleep in the night, there's a problem. The, what, what the situation is suggesting to you is that you were supposed to be keeping your watch within that bracket. For some people, when you finish doing two hours and you go back to sleep, the attack won't come anymore. For some others, you finish 4, 4, 4 a.m., you go back to sleep, the attack will come again. It means your watch has been extended from 12 midnight. Keep on going. Oh, you know, I, you see, I, I, I came to give you liberty, but it looks funny. Sometimes you need the enemy's help to help you keep the watches. And God is, is laudable. He will allow the enemy to try you so that you can enter into the full shape of your watchman mode. May the Lord give you understanding in the name of Jesus. Try it for two hours. Go back to sleep. If the attack comes, increase it for three hours. You will find when sleeping will be convenient and when watching is prescribed. And you will know your own watch scale. Every watchman has his own watch scale. And if you fulfill the demands of your watch scale, when death comes into the land, it's not coming for you. Are you with me? Mm, I've learned a, a thing or two working with God. And I have liberty now, this year. Liberty to share strange things with you that I got from the table of working with God. So you need to find your own scope of watching. Sometimes part of what unveils it is the attack profile that Satan makes available in the corridor of your life you need to you will use that as a barometer to know how many hours you are expected to be watching sometimes god comes expressly and says to you if you want to meet me from henceforth meet me in the night that means he had given you a prescription of your watches if you begin to practicalize it you will know how many hours in the night god is expecting you to be watching and the guarantee is that when you begin to conduct your watching, you will hear what he will say to you. That's number one. And he will also give you answers to the questions that life will ask you in the daytime. So there are two guarantees that you can extract from your watching. In the book of Exodus chapter 14, Beginning from verse 21, the Bible says, And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind 
all that night and God made the sea dry, dry land and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Verse 24. And it came to pass, please listen to me. It came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. Excuse me. It was not all night God was looking. The moment they activated the watch, God could be involved in their struggle. The moment they activated the watch, God could be factored in their situation. If you know how critical, as omnipotent as God is, all right, you will need to invite him into your space in order for his sovereignty to be felt. The moment it was the watch, God became involved in the struggle and he began to trouble the Egyptians. Just in case your own Egyptians have been having a good time, it means you have violated a principle that would have brought down the power of God to engage combat within your space if you watch so the question this evening is what is the state of your Egyptians if they are not receiving trouble it means you are not keeping your watches if Satan in your family is so strong like an arm warrior it means you guys have forgotten the way of the watchman I will stand that's a commitment that the prophet is making what was his commitment I will stand upon my watch I pray tonight that you come to that point in your life where you make a commitment if, you know by the time you begin to work with God and so much responsibility is laid upon you you can't even say you will not watch someone like me can't, I, I'm, no, I'm sentenced to a life of watching but I pray someone else in the congregation will say I will stand upon my watch we don't consider the devil's presence in the environment what we do is that we make a commitment to stand upon our watch. that's when you know how powerful god is the enemy will boast as long as there's no watchman in the territory but be, the moment you activate the morning watches the lord will trouble the egyptians please help me tell your neighbor when will you make a decision when will you take the stand about your watching life Standing upon your watch and mounting your tower is not all there is about the ways of watchmen. When you enlist to become a watchman, there are so many responsibilities that you have accepted to begin to shoulder. Are you with me? You are not with me. I need to give you a little insight because I need to tell you about the metaphors the metaphors of some metaphors in the kingdom that watchmen will inter interface with that's where I'm going when I finish that then I will tell you about the watchmen that watch the move of God are you there? alright so as a watchman the first thing you watch out for is to hear what the Lord will what say to you. Second thing you watch out for is to hear what answers the Lord will give you to circumstances, to situations, to challenges, to people, to demons. What answers? That's the place where wisdom, condensed wisdom, saturates your heart and suddenly you have answers. Right? The third thing that you will need to do as a watchman is to interpret the signs 
Did you hear what I just said? To do what? To interpret what? The sign. Whenever there's an activity in the realm of the spirit, it litters the physical realm and the spiritual realm with signs. And a good watchman should be able to interpret the signs. And if God moves, he litters the realm with signs. How many of you are still in keeping with the book of Acts chapter 2? Notice before the Holy Ghost fell, the Bible reveals that there was a rushing mighty wind. Before God does anything, he makes a sign first. And watchmen are supposed to be trained. The sign can be physical or spiritual. Do you still remember Elijah? When he was waiting upon the Lord on the mountain top, he was asking his servant to go check the sky for what? For signs. It, 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 every watchman must be trained to be able to to interpret signs because many times I hope you know God is spirit you are not aware of that for many of us we think but God is flesh and bone and he speaks like a man God is spirit and because he's spirit sometimes his communication is in the form of signs he opens your eyes to be able to interpret signs in the natural Signs in the supernatural, signs in heaven, and signs in the spirit realm. What's the difference between heaven and the spirit realm? Because there are some times where some signs appear in heaven. I'll show you the difference between heaven and the spirit realm. And signs can be littered all across. And as a watchman, you must be skilled in the interpretation of signs. Psalm 74 verse 9 quickly before I show you the object of a few signs that from this day no, be no longer ignorant of those signs because when you begin to pray, you begin to seek God you begin to talk to God, you begin to cry out, you begin to fast, you begin to keep food aside, you go dry, you only take water God litters his communication to you in physical and spiritual side. And a good watchman must be able to read the signs. Now, this was an unfortunate situation that happened to Israel. It is recorded in the book of Psalm 74 verse 9. What was their testimony? He said, we see not our what? Signs. That's number one. That means if God wants to communicate sometimes, he unveils signs. He said, there is no more any prophet. Sometimes if God wants to communicate, he raises a prophet that will communicate his mind. Neither is there any among us that know it how long. That's an ancient. An ancient has seen it before. So when he sees the situation reoccur again, he can tell you that based on my experience, this is what we are to expect. So there are three categories of, of things here. The first one is the sign. Second one is the prophet. And the third is the ancient. I don't have time now. Maybe during the course of the conference, we can isolate these matters and deal with them thoroughly. But my concern for introducing this scripture is to point you to signs. Every true watchman is supposed to know how to interpret signs. How many of you have ever seen a signboard before? You've seen a signboard? What is the job of a signboard? Gives direction. So a, a signboard points to something other than itself. A signboard is not self-centered. A signboard is not self-seeking. It's not leading you to itself. It is pointing to something. Hoping to give you direction. That's how signs are. Signs do not lead you to themselves but signs are pointing to other things the ability to read signs and know what it is pointing to is critical for a watchman let me give you a few signs so when you pray and fast 
read this is. I'll give you physical ones first. And I will, I will not give you spiritual ones because you will know, you will know those ones. I will explain them so that if you have been having experiences like this, you will know they are signs and you take them seriously. Exactly. First physical sign to watch out for when you begin to seek the face of God is what we call bets. Bets. B I R T H S. A bet is a sign. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 11 and 14. Chief Donald says, How many children do you have? I have one child. Every child comes to point to something. Are you aware of that? Do you know what your daughter is pointing to? You have not read it. <laughs> You pray for many hours, but you don't read signs. It means you are avoiding spiritual intelligence. Pastor Tony, how many children do you have? You have three. Do you know what each one is pointing to? You know? All right, arm him with a microphone. Oh, you don't know that you, you, you existed as a seed of eternity. Before you were sent into time. I know you don't know that. You just think you, your mother got excited. Your parents got excited. That's why you are here. How many of you have read the book of Jeremiah chapter 1? He said, before I formed thee in the womb, I knew you. And before thou camest forth, you existed as a seed of eternity. Before you were formed in the womb, you existed before God. Before thou camest forth, I sanctified and ordained you as a prophet to the nation. Even in that immaterial form, he was assigned to an agenda. That agenda was, was within a bracket of time, even though eternity doesn't recognize time. You are not with me. If at any point in time I'm speaking over your head, just do like this, I will stop. If I see any hand like this, then I will just stop. And then we'll just start singing. Oh, sing, oh, sing, oh. Pray. At least everybody understands singing. Praise the Lord. Oh, sing, oh, sing, oh. Where's my keyboard, man? Let's sing this song. They don't understand, so let's start the singing. Oh, sing, oh, sing, oh. Praise the Lord. Oh! You have not read the signs. You existed as a seed of eternity before you were formed in your mother's womb. The time you came forth, you would have come forth in the stone age. You have come forth in the time of Abraham. But it was now you came. Why? Every, if you check prophetic children, every child that was born, whose destiny was adequately articulated, the prophets around them were able to read the signs, what they were pointing to. Every child is pointing to something. This is not my lecture for the night. I need to take you into the series of lectures to show you how to read the move of God. That's my burden for this night. How to read the move of God. The Lord came to me and said, You've been trying, oh, you've been trying in this year of teaching. But now let me teach you what to teach. He came in December. I need to, you are trying, you are trying hard. <laughs> but I need to upgrade you. I need to upgrade you. I need to upgrade you so that you can help my people. Chief Don doesn't know the meaning of her daughter, what her daughter is wanting to. I have three children. Joshua. Esther. Deborah. These are three seasons of my life. Marked by three children. You don't believe me. So let me be showing you from the Bible. But, but first we have to sing. Oh sing, go oh, sing. Praise. Praise the Lord. 
Everybody understand this song. Praise his holy name. Oh, sing a sing a praise the Lord. The scripture I've been avoiding. I can't avoid it again. That's the problem. All right, let's go. I've, so this is what we'll teach this night. Tomorrow I will now start my today's lecture. Isaiah chapter 8. Moreover, the Lord said unto me, Take thee a great roll and write in it with a man's pen concerning Mahashalal Hashbaz. And I took unto me faithful witnesses to record Uriah the priest and Zachariah the son of Jebrekiah. And I went unto the prophetess, and she conceived and bare a son. Then said the Lord to me, Call his name. Mahashalal Hasbaz. Now the name came before the guy was conceived. He got the guys to record that he has received an inspiration before the conception took place. Are you still with me? When the conception now took place and the prophetess gave birth, he said, assign that name that I gave you. Then he will interpret. He said, before, before the child shall have knowledge to cry, my father and my mother the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. So, the child was raised up as to give to point to a certain political event that will take place. So, we need to read the child to know when that political event will take place. The king of Assyria is going to invade and the king will invade when the child begins to develop auditory faculties to be able to say my father so it are you there so that child is a time clock pointing to a significant event that would change the state of the nation every child points to something so my question to you do you know what you point you have you pointed to what god released you to be pointing i know you don't know that a lot of us want to do our spiritual life haphazardly and you want Satan is very intelligent. You can't discomfit him with gaps in your, your knowledge. He will bamboozle you and make you look foolish. The watchman watches for bets. For before the child shall have knowledge to cry, my father, my mother, the child is pointing to something. And he shall be called Jesus. Why? Because he shall save his people from their sins. He's pointing to salvation. So the ultimate purpose of his manifestation was his death. The most critical thing about his existence was not his miracles, but it was the high place of his life was his death. If you don't know what you are pointing to, when the high place of the, his actualization comes, demons will colonize you. And because you have no knowledge of why you came, you are likely to compromise. And that's the essence of your human existence. Can I speak to you? All right. My first son, Joshua. There was a pattern, a pattern of darkness that was in my family. I prayed about it. It didn't stop. It multiplied. I fasted. I called upon the name of the Lord. It yet increased. Then I said, okay, I know the meaning of this now. It means I need to go deeper. If you are going to Boko and your fuel finishes at one on it, if the car has not spoiled. What you need is more fuel. Have you been praying about a matter and it has not worked? You know what? You need to add spices. 
add fasting add sacrifice because what you are doing cannot take you to where you want to go the fuel has finished the Lord give you understand so there was this challenge in the family the specific challenge is with, with, with health and it was not just in our nuclear family it was in the entire extended family I labored in fasting for 200 and something days and God had mercy on me and showed me and he said in the day that this child is born I will begin to deliver your people I mean the omnipotent God was saying that his deliverance is according to a certain calendar and the child, this child will be a pointer to the season of that deliverance why did the omnipotent God not just come and break the yoke I've been standing. I've been praying. Ah, you don't know the protocol of it. So I waited. When a male child is born in the family, I go and check out to see if this is the one I saw in my vision. I checked five male children. I became frustrated. I stopped checking. Until my wife became pregnant. I went to the hospital in the night because labor came on her intensely in the night. And my mom, being a midwife, was with us. She was able to trace it. I went there and I prayed all the prayer in my spirit. I prayed it till 4 a.m. Miyako Kari Ameni. Laiko Feli Kapole Masukamanta Babo. By 4 a.m., I was expecting a cry of a child. 4 a.m., what happened? My wife strode out. I came up, Cory said, When you are walking, she came and gave me bench that I should sleep, that I should sleep on. So by 6 a.m., brethren came and said, Pastor, it's okay, go and sleep. And I went home. And the sleep came deep. Seven o'clock, they entered my room and woke. I think they said the child has come. Jesus, I woke up with headache. The bongo, they didn't even ask me if I was okay. Took me to the hospital. And once I raised the child like this, it was the vision I saw in Kano because I was raising the man child. It was the child. So I knew that the time for the deliverance of my family had come. My son Joshua was a pointer to the end of our captivity as a family. That was when I began to speak and curse the altar angrily. Don't wake up and go to the shrine of your village and say, I come in the name of Jesus. You will live there paralyzed. Nobody sent you. May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> That's how somebody heard a message and took off and went to a shrine. He, he couldn't speak again. As he lifted up his hand, he, 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 he became still like, like this. That's how they uh, brought him. They brought him like this. <laughs> May the Lord give you understanding. I began to speak. Demand the release of the captives. And a lot of turbulence took place. That boy was a pointer to emancipation. I was in public service for many years. And for five years, my promotions were withheld reasons with her also. I will not tell you why. It was because of my stand for Jesus. I was given a promise by one of our managers that you will never be promoted. And he, he kept his word for five years. Then my daughter came. My daughter was a sign that the days of my promotion had come. After her, her coming, the executive of my office visited here received him. He asked me some questions. I answered. Took him around. He said he had the expanded arm here. I said, oh my God. We have it. This is a food basket. But demons did not affect everything in the land. They left yam. They left the yam. Hallelujah. But I said he was too dressed. I should put on t-shirt. Let's go out. Let him look like a normal man. And all of them would. I gave them fresh orange juice. Hi. Jesus. At the end of the treat, I didn't know that I impressed the man. He went back to Abuja and then called the man that said they would never promote me again. 
Ask him to bring my file. Son that have not been promoted for five years. He said, promote that man. Backdate it for four years. That means I became due for promotion the next year. The man that said he will not promote me, his signature is, is on two of my promotion letters. Now, they, no, no, wait, wait. The question is, when he was signing, where, where was he facing? Was he like this? <laughs> my second daughter was pointing to a fact where even my enemies must be forced to work for me. That's the message of that day. It's, it's enshrined in my books. Number three, my wife took in and I went to preach in a crusade and the demons came to invade her. They attacked her and she lost the baby. I went to God and said, hey, what happened? You know what he told me? I know you not believe. He said, it's not time for you to have a child. It's okay. Then when she now conceived for her daughter, are you with me? That was when God was asking me to resign from ministry and become a full missionary. So that my daughter is pointing to the missionary age of an apostle. Every child, may the Lord give you grace. See, don't just give birth and say, hey, I don't born. No, go on labor for God to give you the grace to read the sign. Okay, so bets are signs. Bets are signs. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 11 and verse 14. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 11 and 14. Please, technical people, let's go. Isaiah 7, 11 and 14. Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depth of or in the height above. 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold a virgin shall conceive. So bets are signs. Is that clear? All right. Second signs that a watchman must read. This one is sorrowful. But you must read it. Deaths are also signs. Unfortunately. Deaths are signs. One Psalms 136. Are you there? Psalms 136. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord of lords for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretch out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. To the sun to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. The stars, the moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn. For his mercies endured forever. Underline that. And brought out Israel from among them. For his mercies endured forever. With a strong hand and with a, a stretched out arm. For his mercy endured forever. To him which divided the Red Sea into parts. For his mercy endured forever. And made Israel to pass through the midst of it. For his mercy endured forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and the host and his host in the Red Sea. The death of Pharaoh was the sign there. It was a proof that his mercy endured forever. There, hallelujah. Some people's death is occasioned by the enduring mercy of God. Every death is a sign that watchmen must read. You must know why. Oh, you are not with me. You are sad now. May the Lord give you understanding. You must what? Know why. It's a sign. It's pointing to something. Some deaths are signs of liberation. 
like that of Pharaoh. It was an act of mercy. It was a proof that God's mercy does what? Endures forever. Some deaths are indications of the fact that the family is at war and that the darkness in the family has been left untouched. It's a call for the warriors to swing into action. A watchman must be able to read deaths, must be able to read deaths, must be able to read patterns. John chapter 5 from verse 1 to 4. Patterns. Patterns. Do you have patterns in your life? Are there patterns in your family? Are there patterns in Nigeria? Are there patterns in Benue State? You must be able to read patterns. Hallelujah. For instance, in Nigeria, where we recycle leaders, if a leader wants his campaigning, all you need, if he has ruled before, go and check how he ruled before. That's what he's coming to do again. Are you with you? Because the man is not a new creation. He's a, he's a man. <laughs> May the Lord give you understanding. We must read patterns. John chapter 5, verse number 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Beth Bethesda. Having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk of blind, half withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Verse 4 is my emphasis. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. An angel went down. That's a pattern. A watchman must be able to study patterns. The science of being a competent watchman is inclusive of your ability to interpret patterns. Suddenly, after three years, one person dies. And then another three years, two people now die in an accident. Ah! After three years again, there's another barrier. There is a science. It is, it is, it is indicative of the fact that a causative agent is an intelligence. It keeps time. It keeps schedule. He understands the cycle. So that is supposed to be a red flag that will launch a watchman into the searches of the deep. Have you read the scripture that says, Deep, call it unto deep. If you want to know secrets, mysteries, hidden things, you will need to go into deep places. May the Lord give you grace to dive into deep places. When you get to deep places, you will now discover that even the kingdom of God operates by mysteries. So if you are operating in the shallow place, <laughs> the real business, the real transaction that is taking place in the kingdom of God, you will never know. You will just be a victim of mysteries being administered. I want to be where seals break. Where things that were concealed will be brought to light. He said the things is it, 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 it. I, what's that scripture again? There is a path which no foul know it, which the vulture's eyes have not seen. The lion's webs have not trodden it, not the fierce lions path pass by it. He put it forth his hands upon the rocks, he overturned the mountains by the roots, he cut out rivers among the rocks, and his eyes see it. Every precious thing he binded the floors from overflowing, and the thing that is hidden, bring it forth to light. The entire spirit realm operates a protocol of secrecy. What gives us the advantage? Because anytime you see the devil operating and he looks strange to you, it means there is a mystery involved, there's a secret involved. What gives us the advantage is that the Spirit of God happens to be stronger than Google in searching. Huh? For the Bible says that the Spirit of God searcheth all things 
That means there is nothing hidden from the sight of the Spirit of God. So if I begin to see a pattern that is not consistent with the promises of God, it behoves of me to launch a search. And there is no discrimination in what the Spirit of God can search out. The Bible says that the Spirit of God searches all things. Yea, even the deep things of God. That means the what is most difficult to search are the deep things of God. He can search every other thing, can search your lineage, he can search your bloodline, he can search your...